OpenAI's ChatGPT can now access the internet and run plugins for ChatGPT Plus subscribers. This is the most significant upgrade since GPT-4, and people are putting these new features to work in exciting different ways. You may have heard a lot of technical talk on the ChatGPT updates, but a lot of channels don't break down the information into a digestible format for all to understand, and that's what I'm here for. From ChatGPT's new ability to browse the web, to its new code interpreter, which is like having your own data scientist and programmer. On this episode of AI Focus, we'll get into all of ChatGPT's newest updates that have set the internet on fire. Oh, and stay till the end to see ChatGPT God Mode, the highest evolved chatbot on the planet. As impressive as it was, we all know that ChatGPT was limited by its training data which stops in 2021. It was quite frustrating to have a tool as smart as ChatGPT but not have it know anything about the world post-2021. But now ChatGPT has web browsing, eliminating data restrictions, and it has every corner of the internet at its reach. In order to use this feature, first you have to sign up to be a member, and then add the plugin by clicking the three dots on the bottom right. Then you select settings, then beta features, and toggle web browsing. Then in the chat, click the drop down under GPT-4 and click browsing, and voila, you're the cat's pajamas. Another cool feature GPT now has is its ability to read from any links you drop into the chat. It can create a write-up based on any topics you're interested in. Or check this out, say you're visiting a new city but you have no idea what to do. You can ask ChatGPT to plan your day and it will include events that are happening that very day in your itinerary. And of course, web browsing with ChatGPT will do wonders for education and research because all the latest studies, research, and statistics are now in the palm of ChatGPT's hand. The next important upgrade is that there are now more than 70 third-party plugins, ranging anywhere from chess to nutrition in ChatGPT, and we're about to explore some of them now. First, there's SpeechKey, a text-to-speech converter where you can download the audio and embed it into different places. The second plugin we'll look at is called Coopert, which will scour the internet for coupons. All you have to do is type in find me a coupon for whatever service and then press enter to access coupon heaven. Then there's Wolfram, the most popular plugin ChatGPT is offering right now. This app gives you access to real-time data and can answer complex math problems. Next we have EDX, which is like your own academic advisor. Say you wanted to learn about engineering from a specific university. This plugin now makes connecting to that university possible, which is out of this world. Finally, we have Zapier, the plugin to rule all plugins that connects apps together, transforming ChatGPT into the ultimate personal assistant. The tool builds bridges between various apps, letting them share info and collaborate efficiently, creating an extremely smooth workflow. Beyond Zapier, there are so many more plugins for things like generating transcripts, getting recipes, finding deals on travel, and creating diagram. So if you're subscribed to ChatGPT, go explore after the video. And by the way, if you wanna stay updated on all the latest AI news, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Before we get into God mode and how to use it, one of the most impressive additions ChatGPT has to offer is the code interpreter, which allows people to do all sorts of things like convert images and edit videos but it's essentially just a plugin that takes your prompt and instead of answering with natural language, it converts it into code, runs the code in a self-contained sandbox, retrieves the answer, reinterprets it back into natural language, and gives it to you. GPT-4 is the engine that powers Code Interpreter, and it knows a lot about code. When you prompt it, it takes the first step, which is called program synthesis, which is where it breaks down into a type of fake code. From here, it can convert to any programming language you could dream of. This is a massive upgrade to the model in every way. And with Code Interpreter, you can run Python code inside of a chat with ChatGPT with additional options to upload and download files. You can then further adjust the code or have ChatGPT make its own suggestions. You can identify trends, plot data, or anything a data scientist would do instantly. It's already been used to create big collections of data, like in this example, mapping out every lighthouse in America, and this map of UFO sightings across America. Check out this example of basic video editing Code Interpreter can do. Data analysis is probably the most common use for Code Interpreter though, because ChatGPT by itself is already really good at it. Now with the new plugin, professionals can look at large quantities of data in new never before seen ways. 
Check out this example from Connor Grennan, who's using data about happiness in different countries around the world. By showing you the data set itself, it's a 2019 happiness data set, uh, GPT, and I'm just going to go over to ChatGPT4, uh, where I'm going to click on that. That's where the uh, plugins can be found, and so I'm just going to go down to Code uh, Interpreter and click on that. And then the next stage is to go over and find this little icon down there, which is where you can upload the data set. And I'm going to go in and find that data set that I got for us, the happiness one from 2019. And here's the thing. I uploaded it. And you'll notice I didn't ask it anything yet. And immediately it just starts breaking down the data. Uh, so it tells you the overall rank, country and region score, GDP per capita, social support, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see how little work this is already required on my part. And then it asks, how would you like to proceed with this data? I'm going to go down here. Uh, and I'm just going to say uh, thanks. I always like to thank it. Tell me some uh, interesting things about what you're finding in this data set. That's finished working. Um, so here's some interesting insights. So it gives you some general statistics uh, right off the bat. ChatGPT with Code Interpreter can become its own data analyst, as a matter of fact. Not only does it extract info from data, but it can decide what's important to extract from it, which opens up crazy possibilities. Eric Beckis on Twitter asked where he could find data about crime rates in San Francisco, and he received a link. Next, all he did was upload that CSV file and say, visualize this for me. And here, you can see a visualization of the hotspots based on longitude and latitude and number of incidents over time. And it even shows the types of crime broken down into different categories and other charts with the time of day that the different crimes happened. This is unbelievable, and it's all done with just three natural language prompts. But how can Code Interpreter help in the real world? For one, teachers can use it to understand why their students are getting the grades they're getting. It could be a tutor for learning code or a tool for understanding company data for a business professional. In finance, you can crunch numbers and make forecasts. And in the medical field, you can search the newest science to make sure you're giving the best treatment possible for a patient. If you want to try it, it's available for ChatGPT Plus subscribers only. OpenAI says that it's particularly good at math problems, data analysis, and visualization, and converting files between formats. And now for God Mode. This version of ChatGPT is called God Mode. It's like ChatGPT on full autopilot that can complete tasks on its own, assign tasks for itself, search the web, and even output entire text documents complete with research, and can even create schedules and to-do lists. First, let's get some background on AutoGPT, the framework for God Mode. ChatGPT was the chatbot OpenAI created last year, and it was upgraded to GPT-4 in March of this year. From here, someone in a basement created AutoGPT, which allows the chatbot to work on autopilot. The only challenge was that AutoGPT requires some technical knowledge in order to install it on a computer. So someone else in a basement created AgentGPT, which is AutoGPT, but in a website that anyone can use. Here, you could give it any task, and it would start creating a to-do list for accomplishing that task. Really fascinating stuff. It's literally thinking about what to do and then executing what it takes to achieve that task. And this brings us to God Mode, which is like Agent GPT, but more powerful. And I'm gonna show you God Mode right now. The website is godmode.space, and this is a free account where you can try God Mode for yourself. So here you see the text box that you would see on ChatGPT. But the difference here is that the chatbot is going to actually try and achieve what you ask it to do by creating subtasks. And in God Mode, each step is going to ask you to approve it, unlike Agent GPT, which just keeps running until you stop it. So here I'm going to ask God Mode to create a six-figure e-commerce business using Shopify. And then you're going to see a bunch of suggestions that God Mode is going to come up with that's going to try to achieve my task. And I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to add every suggestion that I like, which is just going to be all three. The first is to research profitable niches and products to sell on Shopify. The second one is to set up a visually appealing and user-friendly Shopify store with optimized product pages and checkout process. The third is to develop and execute a comprehensive marketing strategy to drive traffic and sales to the Shopify store. Then I'm going to hit launch and it says the AI is starting. Sit back and relax. So once the agent is done thinking, you'll get three sections. The first section is thoughts where you get to see the agent's thought process. It says, I need to start researching profitable niches and products to sell on Shopify. And it goes on to further explain. The second section is reasoning, where it tells you why it's doing what it's doing. This is amazing. 
Researching profitable niches and products is the first step in setting up a successful e-commerce business. By focusing on niches that are in high demand and have low competition, I can increase my chance of success. And then on the third section, it will show you the proposed action. And then you have the option to give feedback. And at the very end, as you can see, it's going to ask you to approve it. And again, what makes it different from AutoGPT is that God mode asks you to approve every single step. So my first task didn't work. So I tried something completely different. I asked God mode to create a YouTube channel about world history and get it to 100,000 subscribers. So its first action is it's going to select a specific niche regarding world history that it thinks will be best. OK, cool. So this one seems to be working. First, it searched for popular world history topics on Google, which didn't work. So it decided to write a list of historical topics instead. And it actually gave me the list of topics in this file here, which is crazy. Now it's going to research each topic more in detail to see which topic will be used for the actual channel. But this is as far as it gets before it asks me for an open AI key, which you can get from the open AI website. All things considered, this is still very impressive. So try out God mode for yourself and let me know how your experience was in the comments. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.